What is up, everybody? Welcome in to the Fantasy Tap. John, you got a smile on your face. What's up? I'm, ex- I'm excited. We got a Dolphins game at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 9.30 Eastern early. time, baby. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, welcome into the Fantasy Tap. This is our week six game-by-game breakdown. We go through every game, every game, except for Thursday night, of course, because it already happened, uh, and break down every fa- the fantasy impacts that they have. Um so, uh, yeah, it's a very, very exciting day for us. Um, football is almost here. Sunday, baby. Um, guys, if you could do us a favor, um, we are a fantasy football podcast, as I said, um, or as you could kind of see. Uh, if you could smash that like button, smash the subscribe button. Also, uh, hit that little notifications bell. That way you get notified every time a new video drops. We also do our live start, sit, questions, um, uh, uh, live session. On Sundays at noon Eastern, an hour before kickoff, we answer your start questions. We go live on YouTube. Uh, we're also going to be going live on uh, Speak, I think is what it's called, on on Twitter. Twitter. Remember that new like little thingy? We're going to try that this week as well, so we'll be there also. Um, but uh, also join our Discord. That is uh, in the description. The link is to join that. It is a growing community. We have We're starting to grow. I like We're it. Getting I like more people. A lot of conversation yeah. going on. Yeah. So very nice. Thank you to everybody who has joined and everybody who's going to join. Um, but anyways, John, let's jump right into it. Miami and Jacksonville in London, mate. How do you feel about this one? Who do you like? Who do you not like? Let's go. This is the battle of some terrible teams right now. Two is going to be back for Miami. Uh, I'm actually in a situation where I'm stuck starting the guy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to hi- just ride the hype train. I think Tua is gonna have a solid day. I think he's gonna come back, look impressive, especially after the offensive line in Miami looked a lot better than what we've been seeing since the beginning of the season. Uh, problem for Miami though, they have no Devonte Parker. Obviously, Will Fuller Will Fuller's hit IR. They're stuck with Jalen Waddle, Preston Williams, and your guy, um, uh, Mike Kosicki, Albert Wilson. Baby. Uh, oh, Albert Wilson too. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. he's man. Uh, Mike Kosicki's there too. So I'm actually interested in starting Jalen Waddle. I'm not very hot on Preston Williams or on Albert Wilson, just on the fact that they don't get used as frequently, even though Preston Williams did show a lot of flashes last weekend. Uh, but that was with Jacoby Brissett in. How are you feeling about Miles Gaskin? Are you starting I'm starting Miles Gaskin for sure. Yeah, must not a must start, but pretty close to it. I right. think he's – they got to get him involved. I mean – they got to get him involved. And he's every time he touches the ball, something good happens. He is clearly the best running back there. I would agree. He's definitely the best running back there. Uh, no, no, no doubt about it. Are you starting to uh, at all? Uh, if I need to stream potentially, um, or if I'm in like a two quarterback, I do think he's going to have a good week. I think he could be a high end quarterback too, uh, this week, okay. a high end quarterback to, uh, if you will, um, Trevor Lawrence. So I think he's going to have a good week. I think he could be a low end quarterback one. I, I really agree. do. You almost um, got on the start list. Yeah, going up against this uh, no Xavier Howard. Um, you know, one of two things could happen, and this is—I mean, I kind of see no reason for him not to be a uh, run, uh, quarterback. One, the Dolphins go out, kick their ass, take take a big point lead, which I hope happens, and they get garbage time, or it's a close game. It's not a shootout, but semi shootout, I guess. Um, over under is 47, which is the highest it's been for the Dolphins, I know, uh, pretty much all season. Uh, and it's going back and forth, and he has a good game and hopefully gets the L, but whatever. So I think T- Trevor Lawrence has a good game. Uh, James Robinson, start of the week uh, for me, uh, must start. So love him, of course. Uh, as far as the Dolphins re- or the receivers in this game, I like, love Jalen Waddle. Uh, I think he's going to have a big game. Uh, Marvin Jones, LaVisca Chanel, you can start Marvin Jones, I guess, in a in a flex. Um, and same with LaVisca. I think they're both, like, risky flexes. One of them I think is oh, going to have no. a Oh, no. They're both going to ball. They're both, they're both going to have a great game. I'm going to call it now. Okay. No, no DJ Chark from, from, the, from play number one. They're, they're going to get used pretty heavily, especially with no, no Xavier Howard to cover either of them. He's, All right. Both of them are going to get some work. All right. What about Dan Arnold? Mike Siggy is my start of the week, so I'm starting him. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not hot on Dan Arnold. Do you like Siggy this week? 
I love Gasicki this week. Okay. If you guys didn't listen to our must starts, go check that out. Mike Gasicki, a lot of people are worried about him because he, when two was in, he didn't do that well week one, but he only ran 18 uh, routes in week one. Yeah. He has averaged 35 uh, since then. So let's jump over. Uh, Los Angeles Chargers and the Baltimore Ravens over under 51. So supposed to be a high scoring game. Um, two okay defenses, two very good offenses. Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, must starts, in my opinion. No question asked. Okay. Um, the only que- – really, Austin Eckler, you're starting. Latavius Murray, Tyson Williams, Vontae Freeman. Are you starting any of these guys, any of the Ravens running backs? No, not at all. Just because we've we, we've seen all of them disappear, and then one of them pop up, and then the others disappear. There's no consistency in that backfield. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, Rashad Bateman is looking like he was designated to return from the IR. So he might play, um, but Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, you're playing. Am I wrong? No, there's absolutely no question. You get both of those guys in there. You can get literally put both of them on your team if you've got them both for some reason. Uh, Are you playing Marquise Brown? Yes. It, yes, okay. I'm still playing Marquise Brown. He gets too many targets right now. Rashad Bateman's supposed to be coming in, but uh, – Harbaugh's even come out and said that they're not going to be putting him out there as he, they're going to basically warm him into the offense. They're not just going to start putting him out there and start targeting him in the middle of the field, every play and letting him possibly get injured again. They want to see him do something. Uh, yeah, so, so I think that yeah. Marquise Brown still has a couple more good weeks. Yeah. I think those are the really, in my opinion, the only three uh, wide receivers I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Agreed. Uh, Mark Andrews, you're playing in my opinion. I mean, Yes, you're playing Mark Andrews yeah. still. Um, and Jared Cook. Are you playing Jared Cook or Donald Parham? You can stream Jared Cook as a streaming tight end, um, but, you know, it's a, it's a streaming tight end. So floor is like three points. Ceiling could be up to 20 if he just happens to get some touchdowns. Um, Ooh. Yeah. I th- yeah, he's a streaming tight end. Uh, Minnesota, Carolina. All right. Kirk Cousins, Sam Darnold. Are you interested in either of those guys? I'm more interested in uh, Kirk Cousins this week than I think I am Sam Darnold. We've seen Kirk Cousins kind of start off really hot and kind of flattened out the past two weeks in week four and five. Uh, But I do think that this is going to be a little bit of a bounce back. Dalvin Cook's trending on coming back, which should completely change that offense. Alexander Madison's played absolutely well. Um, But you can tell that the passing attempts for Kirk Cousins, um, just the game script in general hasn't been – you know, dump passes to Dalvin Cook to let him just take the ball out of the backfield um, and let him run the offense and use that to allow your receivers to get wide open. Um, but I think I think we see a big bounce back game from Cousins. I do as well. I think Sam Donald is usable. Um, you know, I think he mm-hmm. currently he's the quarterback 10 on the year. Um, he's had two one finish as quarterback one like two weeks ago. Um but he's been a high-end uh, 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 quarterback, too, um, most weeks. Last week, it was a dud. I think he continues that high-end quarterback, two trend. Uh, you know, that 14 range, the, 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 between the 16 and, you know, 13 range. Um, so, I think if, uh, you know, if you have a better option, a higher-end option, then you're playing him. Uh, but yep. if it's, like, between him and Ryan Tannehill, I think you go Sam Darnold. Yeah, both these guys are rostered in only 60%, 60% of leagues, so they're both going to be realistically just streaming options for you if they're available. They're not must-starts. Yeah. Uh, Dalvin Cook's plan. Dalvin Cook's my lineup. Yes. Chuba Hubbard. Uh, at this point, no. I think there's still a question of whether or not Christian McCaffrey's going to be playing this weekend. Uh, um, he is out. Is he considered out now? <sighs> yep. Uh, will be Chuba, Chuba okay. will be the starting running back. All right, yeah, you're playing Chuba at running back two or as a flex running back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, DJ Moore, does he have a bounce back week? DJ Moore definitely has a bounce back week. Minnesota's defense has been absolutely abysmal and been allowing a lot of receiving yards to the number one receiving on the team. Uh, and I think DJ has a huge week. And then as well, Justin Jefferson seems to find some some consistency this week and bounces back, or not bounces back, but continues on a good trend, I think. Are you interested in any other receivers? I think Adam Thielen, you're playing, my opinion. Adam Thielen, you're playing. I'm still not playing Robbie Anderson. We just still haven't seen enough from him. Um, even though he did get the targets last week, it's just n- nothing happened on those it's targets. It's not clicking. It's not yeah. clicking. 
Uh, and Terrace Marshall, again, someone who's been getting some sort of consistency in targets, again, just has not yet clicked. But I think towards the end of the year, we'll be seeing a little bit differently. KJ Osborne might be a streaming option at a very, very, very weak or deep uh, situation if you're in like a deep dynasty league. Other than that, no, okay. there's there's not much on here. Uh, Tommy Tremble, he's got he got in the end zone last week um, and the week before, uh, or I'm sorry, two weeks ago, two weeks prior to that. Interested in him? He had four targets last week. I'm I'd be picking him up just to hold on to him because it seems like he's starting to trend getting more and more usage. But I'm not putting him in a lineup, not even as a streaming option, because four targets for the first time in his career uh, could disappear and have none next week. And finally, Tyler Conklin. No, sir. Agreed. Agreed. Green Bay going to Chicago. It's a very low scoring game. I might actually hit the over on this. It's only 44 points. Um, well, Chicago hasn't really been putting up a lot of points since Fields has been in. No, but all you need is Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I guess. Are you playing Fields? No. Divisional game? Nope. I don't nope, blame you. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope. He did nope, have his nope. highest. He had his highest scoring game of his career last week. Cool. He scored nine points. That's good. Yeah. Um, uh, Khalil Herbert. I mean, you're starting Aaron Jones. You're starting Aaron Rodgers. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. No, okay, no. Khalil Herbert. Are you starting him with in the absence of uh, Damian Williams and David Montgomery? I think he is someone that you can stream as a running back this week if you have to. Um. I'm not looking to replace like Chuba Hubbard with him this week. Or, I'm sorry. I'm not looking to, for him to replace. Like if I've got a Chuba Hubbard sitting in my flex or my running back too, I'm not slotting him in there. Right. Uh, I'm still taking your standard players, but he does have the upside because he should be seeing a lot of touches this week. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's a risky, risky play. Um, I think he can fill in that flex spot or like, like you said, if, excuse me, if you're desperate, um, you fill in that running back two spot. I'm in a situation. I have Jamal Williams in my running back two spot. Would you rather Jamal Williams or Khalil Herbert? I think I take Khalil Herbert. Khalil Herbert, uh, just because yeah. I think he's guaranteed a little bit more work. Um, yeah. The problem for me is it's he's only a rookie. I really don't know much about his collegiate career, but he hasn't got he didn't get any passing targets last week, and he didn't get any on the limited amount of snaps that he got the week before that. So is he a one dimensional runner? He's only five foot nine. Hey, shout out five foot nine guys. Are you five nine? Yeah, I'm five nine. I thought you were five ten. Thank you. You've been lying to me. No, I always say no. I'm five nine. Ah. So sorry. Um, uh, let's move on to the receivers. Um Allen Robinson and Darnell Mooney. I think those are really the only two questions. I mean, I don't think you're starting Lazard, Cobb, Am- Amari Rogers, Equinemia St. Brown, anybody like that. I'm not interested in at least. No, absolutely not. You just stick with your Devontae Adams. Allen Robinson and Darnell Mooney, though, I'm finding myself fading Darnell Mooney. I'm actually playing in a league right now, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown over him this week. That is fair. That is fair. I uh, I have to play Darnell Mooney. Um, I have d- just in, in my zero RB league, uh, I have Sonny Michel, Alexander Madison, um, who else? Uh, AJ Green. James Washington and one more Marlon Mack, uh, all on the bench. So in that situation, I'm starting. Would you start him over it or would you start somebody else over him that I named? No, uh, especially because Alan Robinson's questionable at, the point, at this point in time. So there's a possibility that he doesn't make the game. And even if he does play, there's a possibility that he's a little banged up. Like I'm fading Mooney because of my just have not seen it yet from Justin Fields, but he may possibly be the only guy that can catch a football on that team this week. It's in that yeah. case, in that case, um, I think he turns into a solid flex option, but I don't, I, I think he's got upside. If Fields can click this week and just find yeah. himself in a rhythm, you could look at two wide receiver ones on a team. So yeah. he's, he's got risk, but he could have some upside. And are you playing Alan? I'm not playing Alan Robinson personally. No, I'd rather I play not. Darnell Mooney. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then finally, Cole Komet, Robert Tunyon. I know Robert Tunyon is your sit of the week. I agree with you there. Cole Komet, I'm not playing. Not interested in either. All right. Cincinnati 
playing Detroit. Could this be Detroit's first win? It could be, but Cincinnati's been doing really, really well. Yeah. Even the NFL has them in their uh, top 12 power rankings. I believe they might even have them at number 12. Yeah, NFL power, power rankings suck. <laughs> I know. Um, but Joe Burrow, I think, is going to have a good week. I like Joe Burrow this I week. I, I, I think, almost made him a, a must start. I think this might be one of the, the – another week we finally see Jared Goff throw for two touchdowns. Uh, Cincinnati has been allowing a lot of points, but they've also been putting up a lot of points. So I think this is going to be a great fantasy game. I'm interested in Burrow. I'm interested in Jared Goff as a streaming option. If you're pretty weak at the quarterback, uh, as far as the, I I mean, running backs, we can go to the running backs. I'm just really excited to get to the receivers. Joe Mixon questionable tag at the moment. I'm not playing him. Not not playing him. him. I I mean, if if you can, I guess if you need a, if you need a flex option, you can put him there. Um, because of the upside because he did get in the end zone last week but he only had 10 touches which is his lowest on the year uh, or 11 sorry um, total so lowest on the year so I, I, I kind of think they're gonna be easy with him they say he's getting his full workload but I think that's just kind of coach speak you know what I'm saying yeah I'd have to agree uh, DeAndre Swift Jamal Williams Jamal Williams does have a hip injury and an illness uh, so he is questionable. DeAndre Swift is also questionable with a groin injury. Um, I think you start DeAndre you Swift. Start both I mean, of them. both of them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think. I mean, okay. Let me correct myself. DeAndre Swift, you definitely start as a running back two or better, or I'm sorry, or or a flex option. You're not not a comfortable running back one. Jamal Williams, though, I still think has flex appeal. Uh, he hasn't been getting it the past couple weeks, but you know, at any point, both of them are injured. DeAndre Swift could get taken out at any point, man. He did out. And he could go the other. As far as run, as far as rushes, he did outrush uh, DeAndre Swift last week, thirteen to eleven. So yeah, I agree. I think he's a, you know, a flex. Uh, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. I am finding a spot for them in my lineup. Um, You know, I'm not saying. Yeah, I I like Tyler Boyd. Um, Okay. He even, I mean, yeah. I am. Yes. Okay. I, I'm not comfortable playing Tyler Boyd unless it's a risky flex play. I just don't think he's going to be getting the targets with both Hick, a healthy Higgins and a chase. That's finally comfortable there. Yeah. Chase is balling, dude. I was so wrong on him. I will say that I am sorry to everybody. I was wrong on him in the draft. Um, but you know, we're men. We admit our mistakes. I'm in raw St. Brown. Is this his week, John? Last week was a great start, and yes, I do think this is it. This is his chance. Um, actually, the past two weeks, he's gotten 16 targets over the past two weeks. Love it. I think we see. I think we see it again. He looks to be like that team's number one wide receiver when two other guys are on IR. Dude, literally had an even 10 points the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Beautiful flex option this year's Darnell Mooney. And if he gets in the end zone. Looking at a it's, wide receiver, it, high end wide receiver two, low end one. Yep, absolutely. This is my boy. I'm excited. Uh, are this you interested in Khalif or Quintez? Uh, or not Quintez? He's not playing. Um, or Trinity Benson? No, no. Uh, you should you should barely be taking the shot on Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, but I do think he has some flex appeal this week because he seems to be designated targets, uh, especially because I think Hawkinson is a little banged up at the moment as he well. He is questionable with a knee injury. So it could turn into, uh, you know, it could turn into his day. Yes. Yeah. This might be it. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, even fun. as long as he plays, I'm playing him. Um, and then CJ Uzama, are you interested in him? Mm, uh, yes, absolutely. I think he's, I think he's flex, uh, streamable as a tight end, and that's about it. I'm staying away from CJ. I am staying away. Um, Houston playing in Indy. Currently, 43 and a half over under. The Houston Texans are favored by 10. I kind of like that bet. Our bet, our bets episode is coming out later today. We're going to do that live. Um, but as far as the quarterbacks, I'm not playing Davis Mills. Um, I don't – I mean, I know he had a monster week last week. Good for him. Um, but yeah. I just don't think it's repeatable, you know, going to – I don't think it's repeatable. I think a lot of people so against the against the Colts. You don't think he can throw for a few touchdowns and maybe two hundred and fifty plus? Uh, no, no, I don't. I mean, no, 
I don't. I think I think the Colts are they've got to win, man. And I think it's I oh, don't I think, think it's I don't think it's a plus ten game. I don't. I think the the Texans are getting really like I don't know. I think it's stupid that they're that they're that favored, but well look how I, they played against the Patriots last week. Oh, they played very well. Yes, I know. I yeah, called they, the game. I mean, remember, I don't know if if you remember that. I said the Texans would win. They didn't. Almost. If they would have just punted instead of running a fake, a fake punt, real punt, they would have they would have won. But whatever. That's neither here nor there. Uh, Carson Wentz. How do you feel about him? I'm play. I'd play both. I'd stream both these quarterbacks. I think they're both streaming options. Um, Who Davis would Mills, you have ahead of each other? Wentz. Wentz over Mills this week. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't write Mills off completely. I know there's a lot of like leagues out there where people are struggling to find quarterbacks. If there's a couple people in their league where they're hoarding them, yeah. so if you have to take the shot, I wouldn't say it's terrible. And then, and for the running backs outside of Jonathan Taylor, there's nothing. Not a zilch zip. Michael Pittman, though, I do like him. I like him this week. I messed up though. Potentially, I sat Antonio Brown. And I played Michael Pittman, so that might be a mess up, maybe not. But I think I think Michael Pittman has a good day. He has seen consistent targets. Um, he is the devil. He has caught the last three weeks six, 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 so six catches each week. Um, and he got in the end zone last week, which he was lacking uh, all season. So love to see that. But I think he's getting the targets uh, against a meh. Um, Houston Texans defense. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I think the only the only two players or three players that are like strong starts out of this game are going to be Taylor, uh, and then obviously I agree with you on Pittman and then Brandon Cooks. He's my none start of the, of the week, receivers. baby. N- none of the other receivers are going to have. None of the other receivers are likely to get enough work or consistency to make them a strong fantasy start. And both the tight end groups are so so bad. You're not taking Mo Ali Cox. I'm not taking Mo Ali Cox. Are I'm you taking Mo Ali Cox? I'm no. not either. No, no. Just, just, just asking. Double There's people out me, there huh? who would. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams going against the one for New York Giants. Um, over under 48 and a half. So pretty decent. Saquon Barkley is out. Dana Jones is expected to play. Kenny Galladay is out. Kadarius Tony is expected to play as well. Um, I'm going to be real quick with this. I'm not playing Daniel Jones. I think there's other options out there. Um, a lot of these guys we've been talking about so far are some of these guys. Um, I know he's, you know, he's currently the quarterback 12, uh, but that's a very tough defense without Saquon Parkley, without Kenny Galladay. Um, I think it's going to be tough sledding for him. Uh, Matt Stafford, love him this week. He is my start of the week. Um, Daryl Henderson and Devontae Booker. I think Daryl Henderson, running back two, you know, option for you. Devontae Booker, I think is a flex option for you. The, the reason why I like him is he's going to get the volume. Um, so I like him in that aspect. And the Rams aren't necessarily are, are middle of the pack against the running back. So I think he's a flex option, potential running back too. Um, Kadarius, C- Tony, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods are the only receivers I'm interested in. And then Tyler Higby is – and Evan Ingram is a is a is a flex or not a flex sorry a um, a streamable tight end I think this week and I like Tyler Higby. All right, um, that was a lot. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yeah, I was, I, I, I was trying I, to keep it quick, but my mouth just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll just I'll just make it fast. Matt Stafford. I'm playing an obvious quarterback one. Daniel Jones. A uh, very low end streaming option for you. Daryl Henderson should be starting at least as a running back too for you. Devontae Booker is a streaming running back slash low end flex running back for you. Uh, you're starting both Cup and Woods, no questions asked. I do not think you should be starting Van Jefferson unless you're really taking a shot on it. Kadarius Tony is flexible. They do have Sterling Shepard confirmed coming back. Darius Slayton still could possibly come in. I think Tony could see a little bit of work, um, but I do think. If you're expecting what you got last week, you're going to be sadly mistaken. Um, and then I'm not touching Evan Ingram and Tyler Higby can get the play. Okay. All right. Kansas City in Washington. 
bounce back game for the Chiefs? Yeah, should I mean hopefully this is probably the best match, the easiest game that they've had over the past like few weeks. Over under is set at fifty four points. That's high. Are you smashing the under? No. No. Okay. No. Washington's been Washington's been allowing uh, some of the most points uh, across the league. Yeah. 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 They have bad They've, defense. Crazy. Both teams they, have. Did, did you bad ever defenses. hit that guy? That dumbass that said. Chase Young's going to lead the league in sacks and break Michael Strahan's record. He's an idiot. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, Taylor Heineke, I think both of these guys are very startable this week. Um, Heineke's my start of the week. Yes, he is. So definitely yes, get is. him in there. Uh, Antonio Gibson, Darrell Williams, I think are also startable. Um, Darryl, I'd start Antonio Gibson over Darrell Williams, but Darrell Williams, I think, is a solid running back to flex option, um, if possible, this week for you. Uh, JD McKissick, are you interested in him or Jarek McKinnon? Um, not specifically, not, not, not at all. I mean, there's a possibility Jarek McKinnon gets a little bit more, more work than he did last week when Clyde Edwards went down, but I'd honestly fade, fade most of the Kansas city backfield, even though we think Dar- Darrell Williams is going to be getting a lot of work and he more than likely is, it's still how much is that? Even when Clyde had it to himself, he was barely doing anything for us. All right. Uh, as far as the wide receivers, Terry McClure and Tyreek Hill must start, in my opinion. Um, are there any other receivers that you're interested in? Obviously, Miko Harmon coming off a 12-target week. Um, Adam Humphreys, I'm not interested. He did come off second, uh, second most targets this year. Anybody interest you there? No, I'm going to be stick, staying away from everyone else here because I more than likely don't have any of them rostered. Uh, but if I do, um, there's a reason I don't have them rostered. Yeah. Uh, I, I obviously, like you're saying, Nicole came off that big game, but we're not going to expect it again. No, uh, that, that I, we talked about it at the beginning at, in draft season. That run, that wide receiver two spot in Kansas City is so up and down, up and down. It's, you never know who. It's like a box of chocolates. Let's just say that you never know who you're going to get. Um, Travis Kelsey must start. Ricky Seals Jones, are you interested in him with Logan Thomas out? Had nine targets no. last week for the week before. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I think you, I think you can stream him at that point, but I don't think you're comp- like you're looking to start him over your average the guy you drafted. Okay. All right. Uh, let's move on. Arizona, Cleveland. I actually know somebody who's going to be at this game. It's going to be a windy one for twenty. I think twenty two miles an hour winds. Um, which I think that's pretty windy. It sounds pretty pretty windy. Yeah, Nick Chubb is out. Baker Mayfield, I'm not playing. Kyler Murray, I am playing. I'd be interested in Baker this week. Really? I think yeah. I don't see that. I mean, I I, I think he's going to get enough work, especially with Nick Chubb out. I think he's going to end up moving the ball a lot. I'm not starting him obviously as a he's a streaming option for you. You're looking at a guy that's more than likely not on your roster at this point. Daniel Jones or uh, Baker Mayfield? Baker Mayfield. Okay. I'm trying to think who else. Um, obviously, you're not taking Taylor Heineke. Um, Carson Wentz or Baker Mayfield? I'll probably play Baker Mayfield here. Okay. I think this, I think, I think this game is going to be pretty big. Him and Kyler Murray are both in that, that young quarterback age bracket that's still in their proving it stage. And even Baker with this injury has been fairly vocal trying to show out. And after watching him last week, keep up with Justin Herbert as well as he did. Um, and then losing their best running back makes me believe that we're going to see him trying to air the ball out a lot again. Uh, one more for you, Jared Goff or Baker? Baker for sure. Okay. All right. All right. You like Baker. This um, week, yeah. yeah, there we go. Uh, Chase Edmonds, James Conner, I think are actually flexible this week. I know uh, they're yeah. going up against. I know they're going up against a tough defense. Um, but like I said, it's going to be a winning one. I think it's going to be a. What's the over under here? Forty nine, which pretty pretty low, I guess. If for the Arizona Cardinals, I know they're coming, coming down. Um, you know, or coming off that really low scoring week, but Cleveland put up some points last week. Uh, I think that Chase Edmonds and James Conner are both going to get enough work to be flex flex options. Um. 
And I love Kareem Hunt this week with Nick Chubb out. Yeah, absolutely. You have Kareem Hunt's turned into a must start at this point. Uh, wide receivers, who are you interested in? Obviously, you're playing D Hop. No questions asked. I, I'm not excited to start AJ Green or Christian Kirk or Rondale Moore, but I do think that last week we saw Rondale Moore get his targets again, made some great catches. I think you can throw him in a flex option. OBJ flexible, maybe even though they was a huge game, did not show out whatsoever. The only person that was targeted heavily on that team was David Njoku. And I'm, I guess I'm not starting any of the Cleveland receivers. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting D-Hop. That's probably it this game. That, uh, that is it, actually. Um, no tight ends, no nothing. Uh, Las, Las Vegas in Denver. Um, I think this is a good week for Teddy Bridgewater. I think he has a, a nice, solid week. I think, honestly, after everything, I think he's nice, nice uh, running or uh, quarterback too. After everything that happened, you know, this week with Las Vegas and things like that, maybe I'm wrong, but I think they come out in shambles. Yeah, I don't see a lot coming from it. That's why Derek Carr is one of my set of the weeks, yeah, as well Josh, as Josh Jacobs. Yeah, Josh Jacobs, I think, is a running back two flex option at best. Um, Javante Williams, though. I think this is his breakout game, baby. We have slowly seen him get more work, be on the field a little bit more. Um, plus, Melvin Gordon has that injury. Um, he has a questionable tag. He has a hip injury. I think it could be Javante Williams' week, baby. He's your start of the week, so. isn't he? He is my start of the week. It is his week. There's no questions asked. The Raiders have been allowing the second most uh, rushing – I'm sorry, points to the running back across the fantasy football world over the past two weeks. And Javante Williams is more than likely going to have that backfield to himself or if not carry at least a 75% carry, or carry share there. So I'm, I'm in love with him this week. He's definitely a running back to must start uh, for sure. All right. All right. Uh, Corlin Sutton, Tim Patrick are the only two wide receivers I'm interested in. I think Tim Patrick's going to be a solid flex wide receiver three for you. Quillen Sutton, in my opinion, could sneak up into that wide receiver two conversation as well. Yeah, uh, 100% agree. Cortland Sutton's a low-end wide receiver two. And then Noah Fant and Darren Waller, you're starting. Yes. Uh, Dallas in New England. Uh, Dak Prescott must start. Mike Jones not starting. Yeah, Mac Jones is almost a must-sit at this point for me. Um, going to the running back, Zeke, you're starting. No questions asked. I don't know if I'm still playing Tony Pollard at all, though. I know he just I'm had not. his, you know, 10-point game, had 14 carries, but it was a hell of a game. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not playing Tony Pollard. Unless it's a weak flex, but even then, uh, you know, I, I, I actually took him out of my lineup. Um, Damian Harris, do you trust him? He is questionable. I, I trust him to – get you a bare minimum day and even on his best day which we what we saw in week two is a 60 yard day which isn't a, a bunch of yards but 60 yards and one touchdown and he barely cracked 10 points i think you're getting yourself a mediocre floor with no ceiling so do with that what you will running back to if you don't have any other options he'll fill it but you're not happy to start yeah i think you're really wanting to play him in your flex you know as a a meh flex option even um, then i'm taking a i'm taking a receiver with some upside over him yeah really okay all right um yeah you can fill in that running back too if it's if you're desperate um amari cooper cd lamb i mean you're playing both of them and i'm worried about jacoby myers he had two games th weeks three and four he had two good games um but outside of that i mean if he gets the trayvon diggs treatment he's gonna be donezo yeah, but I don't I, um, think he shadows him, in my opinion, because I don't think he's that good of a wide receiver. I mean, I think he's a good wide receiver, but I don't think he's, like, that caliber to get a shadow. Yeah, I mean, I'm really not worried about Trayvon Diggs being sent to shadow any singular receiver in this game. I think they're just going to focus on just shutting down the passing game in general, and it's definitely possible there. Uh, I'm not touching anyone out in this game outside of Lamb and Cooper, Schultz, and maybe Hunter Henry is a 
tight end after last week. Maybe hope it happens again. Yeah, I, I agree with exactly what you said there. I agree with that. Uh, Seattle and Pittsburgh. I, I like this matchup. I think it's going to be a good game uh, offensively um, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Geno Smith starting at quarterback. Are, are you interested in Geno? No. No, yeah. no, I think you got I'm, better options. Yeah, I think there's plenty of options out there. I would I would take Baker Mayfield over Geno. I'm not interested in Ben Roethlisberger, obviously. I'm not having a great season, but it could be a bounce back game for him. Love Najee Harris. Hate Alex Collins. Um, it's going up against this defense. The Chris Carson is going to IR. So there's yes, that. Sir. Russell Wilson also on IR. I think this is the game of the receivers, though. This game, DK Metcalf. Tyler, I actually 100%. like Tyler Lockett this week. I'll um, take him for sure. Yeah, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool. I think both of those guys can find a spot in your roster. I think. I think Deont- you have him as a must start. I agree I with you 100. Love Deontay this week, and I think Chase Claypool gets it done as well. Um, are you interested in any of the tight ends? Uh, no, not at all. I, I, would, I mean, streaming I would, streaming options on on Fire Move. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Especially with Juju out, there's an opportunity for him to get more of a share there. Yeah. Uh, hopefully he gets in the end zone. And then finally, our Monday night game. Do you think the Tennessee Titans can upset the Buffalo Bills? Or No, not at all. Okay. All right. Yeah, Ryan Tannehill is my sit of the week. I think it's going to be pretty rough sledding for him. Josh Allen, obviously you're starting. Derrick Henry must start. Are you starting any of the running backs there in Buffalo? I think I can flex or low end running back to Zach Moss. He's just done just enough almost every week to, to be considered usable. And if you got him, just understand that he's, he's usable. That's, that's about it. It's, it's just mainly doing your roster. I, I, I agree. I agree. Stefan Diggs, I'm playing, hoping for a good bounce back week this week. I think he could have one. Um, I think I think we could see him go off this week. I really do. I think he could have a really, really good bounce back week. Um, Emmanuel Sanders, I'm playing as a wide receiver, like three flex. Um, he's been getting targets, been getting in the end zone as well, which is nice. Um, so I do like Emmanuel Sanders. Not and not really into Cole Beasley. He hasn't been getting the volume needed to be relevant um, outside of weeks one and three. Uh, AJ Brown, Julio Jones, Julio. I'm not playing. He's my sit of the week. Um, AJ Brown. I'm playing as a weak wide receiver two or a flex. I think we're getting to that point where it's like, I think it's gonna be Derrick Henry. Yeah, I really do. I think you play both receivers. I think AJ Brown's a, a low wide receiver one, a high wide receiver two, and I think Julia Jones fills in at, at least a flex at, at worst this week. I know we're expecting a huge Derrick Henry day, but Derrick Henry can eat while everyone else can too. And I think this is a day where we see Derrick Henry not crack the hundred yards, but still get the touchdown, while Ryan Tannehill's forced to throw the ball. Dawson Knox, he is a must-start tight end at this mm-hmm. point. He is a baller. He has been on a rather great streak. He's this year. I would say he's this year's Robert Tunyon. He's already got five freaking touchdowns one week. <laughs> so, uh, but not only that, he's putting up yards. Last week he put up 117, put up 49, um, and 41 in weeks one and three. So, uh, and then are you in- interested in Anthony no, Perkins? Oh, okay. right. Yeah, he can he can sit the bench. He shouldn't be yeah. on anyone's roster. True. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is our game-by-game game breakdown. We just talked about a lot of players. Uh, if you have any questions on any of those players, don't forget to join our YouTube, uh, our live on uh, Sunday at noon Eastern. Uh, we will be answering all your start sick questions. Anything you're – not even just your start sick questions. Anything you your heart desires, you can ask us. We'll answer it. Um, dating advice, we're here for it. Uh, shoulder to cry on, we're here for it. Got two. Yeah, we got two. We got four, technically. Four shoulders. A lot of people. Yes, sir. Uh, Anyways, let's get out of here, John. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Don't forget, join that Discord. Hit that like button. Smash the subscribe button. Hit the little bell icon. And let's have a freaking week. Let's get the dubs this week. 
All right, man. I'll see you guys around. See you Sunday. All right, guys.